What can we learn from the heroes of faith that are written about in the Bible? And what does Jesus want to say to us? Leo has inherited his grandfather's old Bible, and now he and his friends want to find out more about this book. The Bible explorers are on the case. Do you remember what we spoke about yesterday, that we should do something nice with our brothers and sisters instead of arguing? Yes. I actually had a really nice time with my little brother yesterday. It worked really well. Not for me. I was trying to be kind, but straight away I got angry with my younger sister over a tiny thing. I didn't manage to be kind to her at all. Did you give up? Yeah, I don't think hmm. I can manage it to be kind to my irritating younger brothers and sisters. But how about we spin the Wheel of Happiness? And maybe we'll get something that will help for this very thing. It's 1093. Can I have the book? Yes, here. Ask and you will receive. Seek and you will find. Knock and it will be opened for you. For he who asks receives, and he who seeks will find. And he who knocks, it will be open for him. Matthew 7, 7 to 8. It says here that it is Jesus saying, so it must mean something very important. That's completely true. These words do come from Jesus himself. And that is also something that you children can learn a lot from. It means, quite simply, that Jesus wants us never ever to give up. If there's something that we need, we have to pray for it. When he talks about seeking and knocking, he's talking about when there's something we don't understand or can't figure out. Then we mustn't give up. Those who hold out are the ones God will help. Jesus promises that. There is one particular story from the Old Testament about a man who never gave up. His name was Jacob. The story about him begins with his grandfather, Abraham. Abraham was a very special man who always trusted in God. Therefore, God promised Abraham that he'd be blessed and that his family would be a chosen nation. God's own special people. This blessing from God was inherited by Abram's son, Isaac. And Isaac was supposed to give that blessing onto his son. And this is where the story about Jacob begins, as he was Isaac's son. Jacob had a twin brother who was called Esau. Esau was born first. In other words, he was the firstborn. As a result, it was Esau who was supposed to inherit Abraham and Isaac's blessing. Esau had what was called a birthright. That's how it was in those days. The eldest son was the one who would inherit. The twins were very different, both as children and as adults. Esau was a bit rough, while Jacob was calm and liked to stay close to tents where they lived. One day, Esau came home from hunting, starving, hungry and tired. He couldn't get something to eat quickly enough and asked Jacob if he could have his food. Jacob considered this. You can have my food if you give me your birthright, he said. Esau obviously cared little about the blessing that he should inherit because he did just that. He gave Jacob his inheritance to get food in return. He had agreed to let Jacob inherit from Abraham and Isaac and continue the family line. Their father, Isaac, did not find out about what had happened as Jacob kept it a secret. But when Isaac became old, almost blind, and knew he had only a short time left to live, he called Isaac to him to give him the blessing. But first he wanted Esau to go out hunting for some good meat so that he could have a proper meal. Then he would bless him. Esau said nothing about how he had actually given away the birthright to Jacob. He went out hunting to do as his father said. But Jacob found out about what was going to happen. He understood that he had to act quickly. When Esau had left to go hunting, 
Jacob's mother helped him make a good meal for his father. Isaac was almost blind, and so he wasn't able to see that it was Jacob who had come to him and not Esau. But Esau had very hairy arms, so Jacob put some animal furs on along with Esau's clothes. This way, he could smell like Esau and look more like him. Then he went in to see his father, served him food, and Isaac blessed him. When Esau came home and realised that the blessing had already happened, it dawned on him what he had done. He'd sold his birthrights in return for food, and now it was Jacob who would continue the family line. Esau was so angry that he decided he would kill Jacob. Jacob had to run away, and he left as quickly as he could. He had some relatives in a place far away, and it was there that he would run to. But it was a long and tiring journey. One night, when he lay down to sleep out in the wilderness, he had an amazing dream. He dreamt that he saw a ladder that went right up to heaven. At the top was God, and he spoke to Jacob. He gave him promises for the future, that he would be with him and that God would not leave him until he had done what he had promised. Jacob knew that what he saw and heard in the dream was from God and he trusted in what God had said to him. Jacob arrived at his relative's house and settled in. He worked for a man called Laban. Laban had a daughter that Jacob became very fond of. Her name was Rachel, and Laban agreed to let Jacob take her as his wife, if he worked seven years for him first. After seven years of hard work, the wedding day came. But then Laban did something very mean. Instead of letting Jacob have Rachel as his wife, he sent his eldest daughter Leah to the wedding. Laban said that if he wanted Rachel as well, he would have to work for seven more years. Jacob liked Rachel so much that he didn't see any other option than to do as Laban said. Despite being tricked by Laban, Jacob continued to do a very good job for him. But after that, Jacob knew that he could not trust his father-in-law. The only thing Jacob could trust in was God. God helped him so that after a while he had many animals and a good amount of money, while Laban couldn't understand how he had achieved this. Eventually, he had built up so much wealth that he could leave Laban and travel back to where he came from. Without saying anything to his father-in-law, he gathered his family and all his animals and left. When Laban realised, he became furious. He went out after them to catch them. But at night, when he had to rest, he had a dream. God came to him and warned him not to attack Jacob. Laban was scared by the dream, and when he found Jacob, he didn't dare to do anything bad to him. Instead, they set up a peace pact, and Jacob was allowed to travel on with his family unhindered. Over the course of several years, Jacob had first run away from his brother and then worked for an unrighteous and dishonest father-in-law. Now he longed for the blessing that God had promised him, that he could live safe with his family in the land that God had given them. But there was one thing that made Jacob uneasy. How was it with Esau? Was he still in the homeland and was he still angry? Maybe he would attack them. Oh, yeah, man. That night, something amazing happened. While the others slept, Jacob went to spend some time alone. Then a man appeared and wrestled with him through the whole night. Jacob would not give in and fought so hard that the man eventually touched Jacob's hip and dislocated it. Jacob realised that the man he was fighting with was God himself. That's why he wouldn't give up. And whilst he struggled to hold on, he said to God, I will not let you go until you've blessed me. And then God said to him, You will no longer be called Jacob, but Israel. For you have fought with God and man and won. Then God blessed Jacob. The blessing Jacob received was realised even by the next day. Esau came to meet them. Huh. 
but instead of attacking, he go. ran towards Jacob, hugged him and wept. He was mm -hmm. no longer angry and he didn't want to cause Jacob any harm. Mm. Then a new time began for Jacob. Mm. After all these years, God blessed him, giving him freedom and peace. Because Jacob held out and continued to believe in God, God blessed him and was with him for the rest of his life. He never gave up. Seek and you will find. Knock and it will be open for you. I also want to do that, to not give up. Jesus will help me so that I can do the good. 